In this lesson, we're going to look at some fundamentals of modeling data in JSON, as well as a technique of tracking your document type within individual documents in various ways. We'll see how this can be useful. So data modeling in general is the notion of shaping the data that's relevant to whatever domain you're working with. What are you writing your software about? So you look at the entities in the domain, the various objects and their attributes like pets and owners and the properties that describe them. Then you look at the relationship among these entities, which entities belong to which and how. And then how many are involved? Are the relationships one-to-one, -one, many to many, one to many, and are they unidirectional or bidirectional relationships? For a long time, the software industry has been bound to the notion of normalized data. Relational databases enforce the shape of your data at the database layer. If you try to put data in or take it out in a shape that's different from what the database allows, you're going to get an error. By contrast, Couchbase infers your data schema from the structures you actually use and potentially evolve over time. So in a relational database, you have the same fields in all records of every table, even if some or many of those fields may be left null. Regardless, you have to plan in advance which fields you may want. By contrast, in Couchbase, your fields potentially vary for each and every document. So you may have a couple of million records with one shape, and then your software evolves and fields get added for the next version. Yet all of these records reside together and can be queried as a group. So in a relational database, the goal is to have no duplicate data. All of the frequency with which this rule is broken in modern software says a lot about why Couchbase exists. Because in Couchbase, your data can be duplicated. It is denormalized, and this is normal and natural, and the nickel query language has tooling to support working with these variances. Another implication of the relational approach is a monolithic architecture, because if your data is divided up into normalized tables to get it out in the shape that you actually need, you have to join data in memory, and joins do not work well at all across a cluster. This is why Couchbase has a scalable, clustered architecture by design. Relational databases are optimized for predictable data entry, where you know the shape of your data far in advance and you don't expect it to change very often. By contrast, Couchbase is optimized for flexible, large-scale data use that matches the development patterns that we actually see in current software development. So how does Couchbase store your data? Well, at root, it's key-value pairs. The key can be shaped however is necessary, the value can be as simple as a couple of characters. More commonly, however, people work with documents. You have a key referring to a JSON document of whatever structure is appropriate for the data structures in use within your own software. So the key, often also called the document ID, can be any string up to 250 bytes. The value can be any binary value up to 20 megabytes. So key patterns end up being quite useful because you can put a lot of information into the key of a document. It's common practice to encode, for example, the document type within the key. So you might use a pattern of document type and then some separator and then ID. So we could have order colon colon one, two, three, or what have you. You can go further than this, perhaps for multi-tenancy reasons. You might have an application name followed by a document type, and then potentially multiple IDs expressing various aspects like a company ID followed by an order ID, something of this sort. You could have the document type and express parent-child relationships within these. The possibilities are endless. It's up to the creativity of the software developer. The separator conventions themselves are neither enforced nor required. We often use double colons in samples that we show here at Couchbase, but it could be underscores, dashes, whatever makes sense to you. A useful point, though, is that your keys are cached in metadata by default. So if you're working with large bodies of data and with Couchbase, you very likely are. You want to consider the sizing impact of your key if you choose a very long key pattern. Another useful note 
our cross data center replication can be filtered based on these key patterns to distinguish which data sets reside in which data centers around your geographic regions. Another way of keeping track of the document type is to embed it within the document itself as an attribute. So you could have a key value pair where the value is a JSON document, and it includes an attribute by convention commonly called type or maybe doc type, indicating the type of the document. This information is useful, particularly when you're working with nickel. If you're not familiar with nickel yet, well, if you know structured query language, you kind of know nickel already. So we could, for example, select email and billing address fields out of the customer 360 bucket where the type of the document is customer. Given the indexing capabilities of nickel and the query and data service in Couchbase, this technique becomes quite powerful. To learn more about JSON data modeling, take our introductory course here online. One last note for the lab ahead. We're going to be working with what's called middleware in the SLIM framework. You're able to add functions that will pre-process and or post-process each request before and or after the route handler runs. When using this technique, you can also pass data among the various handlers by adding attributes to the requests. As you see here, adding a doc type that's received on the path for a given route so that the code to extract that value can be kept in one place. If you'd like to know more about middleware, go ahead and check the Slim Framework docs, and in the lab, all the code will be there for you to examine and play with as much as you like. So what have we learned here? First, data modeling is the notion of examining the entities, relationships, and cardinality within the particular software domain you're writing code for. Relaxed normalization enables large-scale applications. Modern software is dealing with dozens of individual interactions per customer transaction. They're moving through your website for a long time before they hit the Buy button. So you need a database that can scale appropriately as well as follow the changing nature of your underlying data structures. Similar documents should be categorized by type. You can do so by either embedding in a document or prefixing type to the document ID. In our labs, we're doing both. You would pick the model that works best for you for a production system. If you embed the type, this supports nickel querying and indexing. and ends up being very useful over time. Last, we looked at how Slim Middleware allows you to pre- and post-process requests coming in to your REST API. In the lab, you're going to identify document types based on the path of the incoming request. You're going to write code to extract this value as middleware and then pass the attribute along so that the document type can be persisted with the documents, both based on a key pattern as well as an embedded type reference. When you're done with this, come on back. There's more to come.